A couple of years ago, I visited Silicon Valley in California and there I met with a venture capitalist. And we were talking about some great startup ideas, what the market was doing. And this person shared that every now and then there would be a startup approaching this VC firm and pitching an idea about a data analytics tool. And in the end of the day, it would turn out that what these people were building was pretty much just a new version of Excel pivot tables. So this little anecdote hopefully makes clear that pivot tables in Excel are really extremely powerful. They are a tool that you will be expected to definitely master in any consulting role, for sure in the big MBB strategy consulting firms like McKinsey, BCG and Bain. So in this video I'm going to talk exactly about that and this is pivot tables in Excel. So welcome to a new coffee break here on my channel Firm Learning. My name is Heinrich and on my channel I want to help you to become successful in the first years of your career. And to help you follow along in this video, I will offer the data set in Excel that we use to build this, including the tables, the results of this video as a download for you, of course, for free. You can access this via the link in the video description. Check it out to get the data set and then follow along while I show you the things here in this video. Let's start by looking at the data set that will serve as the basis for your pivot table. And you can imagine this to be the data set of a retailer. So data like that in such a simple normalized format you can commonly obtain as an export from all your ERP or business information systems. What we have here is in the first column the stores. So as you can see here this company has different stores that it operates. Every store has the own ID that is associated to the store. And then there are lots of sales reps. So here we just have the ID of the reps. You can see that there are apparently about 154 sales reps like that. And and then the data is breaking down by months. So we have all the months here first and the numeric value from 1 to 11. So as you can see here, this is just data from January to November. And then you can see both the net revenue that here was generated and also the cost. So the cost of goods sold, COX. Now let's include a pivot table. Now I just highlighted here the whole table. And now to access pivot tables, you click here on insert and then you click on pivot tables and then you can just go here on from table range. And if you click on that, it asks first for the table range and here it already then pre-selects the range that was selected before. So as you can see, this is exactly the table that we have here until the end here of the sheet. And then it asks where this is supposed to be inserted. So do you want to have it on a new worksheet or on an existing worksheet? You can just leave it as it. And then if I click OK, you can see that here it inserted a new tab. And let's maybe just call it pivot table here in the bottom. Now you can see it looks something like this. And here on the right, you have all the different variables here of the table. So for this to work properly, it's important that each column has a column header. So in the first row of each column, there needs to be yeah, some header, some name. If this is missing, you might get an arrow. And also here, all the different variables. So here for New York, for instance, in every row, it needs to repeat New York. So what doesn't work is that maybe only in until here, only maybe in the first you have New York and then you leave all this empty. This doesn't work. This will give you errors. This will hinder how your pivot table works. You can see that right now the, the pivot table is just an empty field pretty much. But here on the right, you have these four key fields, right? So you have filters, you have columns, you have rows and you have values. So let's start here with the values bucket. The idea is now that you can just drag and drop these variables in these four areas here. So let's start with the net revenue. So let's imagine here in values net revenue, we just want to have the number. And this now just gives me the total revenue number in the table. And we can just verify that. So if I just highlight all of that, we can see it here on the bottom. The sum of this is 6.7998 and so on. Yeah, million euro, which is exactly the number that we have in here. Of course, this is not so insightful yet. So maybe let's now split it up by different variables, right? And we can do that here in the rows. And maybe the first one to go for would be the stores. Maybe we want to see how now the revenue breaks down by store. Store. And we can just do that by dragging and dropping here the store name to the rows. And now as you can see, maybe let me zoom in here a little bit. As you can see now it shows me the revenues by store. Of course we can also format this here as an accounting number. And this of course is not great, right? Because now it gives you already some basic data which of course you could also generate from this table but it would take you some time, right? It would take you like and of course different ways of doing that. But it's not that trivial. Usually the pivot tables are the best ways 
to really create some aggregated data, aggregated things that you can exit here. Now next, you can use more than one variable in the row. So let's say we want to break up the revenue data of the stores also by months. And we can just then drag as an additional variable here the months in here. Right, so now you can see here January, February, March. Of course, instead of that, we can also just drag and drop here this other variable which just gives the numbers. I mean, surely like this is probably not that helpful. So let's take out here the names and just the numbers or the other way. Of course, we can also access both. Let's maybe stick with the names for now. And now you can see that it's breaking up the data uh, by these variables. You can see that here I can collapse and expand this to then just get the totals. If I right click, I can also access this menu and for instance say collapse entire field, right? To collapse them all or then also expand entire field to get them all again. Now let's also look at, at some other variables, right? I can pretty much nest in here as many variables as I want. Maybe I want to also look at the sales reps. And now we can break up the revenue by store, by months and by sales reps. Maybe let's take out the months again just to have the stores and the sales reps. The order matters, right? If I turn it around, if I first start with the sales reps and then with the store name, you can see that it looks like this. So maybe not that interesting, but of course you can also just use little exercises like this just to get a better feel for the data. So maybe you are asking yourself, is one sales rep only working in one store or is one sales rep maybe also working in different stores, so more than one store, right? And if we look at that, we can see that for each of these sales reps, there's always only one store listed. So if one sales rep ID would, yeah, would be apparent, would, would show up in more than one stores, you would have here different rows with different stores nested under the sales rep, which is not the case here. And now maybe you want to show the months, but not here in the rows, but maybe in the columns, right? So this is an additional field that you have available here. So if we just take the months and I just drag it here in the columns field, what you can see is that instead of breaking the fields down here in the rows, I can just show the values here in the columns, which of course makes a lot of sense for, uh, for, for continuous data, like time data. So for other variables, if we wanna put the sales reps here in the columns, this of course gives me a result, right? And I can see now all the sales reps by stores like that, but of course that's not really intuitive to read. So for this, usually you will rather go with the columns. And of course, now I can also do this here on the monthly data, as we can see right here, and then have the stores break it down by the sales reps and then those data here in the columns. Last but not least, there's the filter bucket where you can insert filters. So let's say we want to show this data, but not for all the sales reps, but only for some sales reps. So I can now drag such a variable, for instance, here the sales rep IDs into the filters. Now you can see that it added here this row where I can now click on that and now select that. Maybe I just want to look at this, maybe just for the sales rep with the ID number one. And that's apparently a sales rep that maybe isn't with the company anymore. So let's pick another one maybe with the sales rep number five. And here we can see this person only work in the store in New York in April and July. Of course, you can also go and select multiple items by selecting several sales reps, just here randomly select some, and then we can get all the data for that. Of course, I can do this with other variables as well. Let's take that out. And maybe let's say that I only wanna show, maybe let's take that out again. I wanna show the revenue data for the stores, but not for all months, but only for some months, right? So I can go in here, and I'll just look at the number for January or for February, right? Or maybe I want to show it for January to March. What is also often handy is that you cannot only report on the sum of a variable like the revenue, but sometimes you also want to look into some other types of reports here, right? So then you right click on a variable here, like the sum of the revenue, you click on value field settings, and now you can see that you can report all different types of things. So count, average, max, min, product, and so on and so forth. So I think in this instance, this doesn't make too much sense. What we could, for instance, maybe do is look at the max, and now it reports the highest revenue figure that it finds for the store in the table. And if you here remember how the table is set up, probably what this would mean is that this number represents the highest monthly revenue that one sales rep created in this store. So again, this depends a bit on how here the base table is set up. Often the sum though will be the go-to format that you wanna go for indeed. Now let's look into some layouting considerations. So maybe this example again, where you had the stores and then the months not in the filters, but here in the rows. So of course, while this is a great view, sometimes you also want to have such a data set as an output then in a normalized table format, because we can see here that now the column A contains mixed 
information, right? It contains both the name of the store and also the ID of the month, which is not always favorable if then you want to do some other things with the data. So what you can do to fix it is right click here on the table and then go on pivot table options. And then under display, you find here the option classical pivot table layout, enables dragging of fields and so on. So usually I like to have this activated because what this is doing, it separates all the different information in different columns, which is what you need if then in the end with such a pivot table, you wanna create a normalized table format again, which can be helpful for instance, with building dashboards. So if you watch my other video on creating dashboards in Excel, you know what I'm talking about. I will link it somewhere above here. This technique is really helpful to, for instance, then with some if formulas and so on, build some quite dynamic dashboards. Check out the video if you wanna learn more about that. You can also do things like um, deleting or taking out here the subtotal. So we can see that here we have the subtotal for the store name. We can take it out, of course, inserting again if we want. And then again, for the sake of having normalized clean tables, often what you need to do is that you want to repeat the label Berlin, right? So you don't want the store name only to appear in the first row, but you want it to appear in all the rows, again, in order to have a nice normalized table format. So if you want to do that, just to right click, click field settings. And then you can do here at layout and print to go on repeat item labels. You need to tick the check mark and then you will have it repeated throughout the table. Again, you might want then also to take out the subtotal again to have a very clean, normalized table to work with. So let's continue and let's say we might want to do some more, right? We not only want to work here with the revenue data, but we also want to show some margin information by store and by month. Or maybe let's not do it by month, but by sales rep, right? So we might want to compare the different margins that the sales reps have available here. So let's take out the filters to show all the reps in all the stores. And of course, the variable that we have available here are the cost. So I can now drag the cost also here in the values area to now show both the net revenue and the cost. So now one thing, and maybe let's start first without the reps to simplify. Now here we have the revenue and the cost data. One thing that of course, typically you would like to do is you would now take the revenue and subtract the cost in order to get to the margin, to the gross margin. The problem is that you cannot really work with like this with pivot tables because if you just copy that over, as you can see, it does not really then go here and then adjust the formula accordingly. So that doesn't work. There are some other ways to like, you know, make it work. You know, let's not go too much into that. Of course, another alternative would be you can just take the table and you can copy just the values, right? So you can copy the values and then of course you just have the data here extracted next to you. You can of course also format this in an accounting format. And then of course you can do whatever you like. So you can do the same calculations. And then of course also the style of working with formulas does work to make that work. But that's also not the real way how these pivot tables are intended to work because of course now if you change anything here, this doesn't adjust automatically. But sometimes this can be a little hack to in a very quick and straightforward way do your own calculations. So instead what you can do to really make this work uh, in pivot tables is to use something that is called calculated fields, right? So if you here click on then pivot table analyze, so you need to highlight the pivot table for this to show up. You go on fields, items and sets, you go on calculated fields. Now you can just create your own additional field. So let's say we want to have the gross margin and let's first start in absolute, so in Euro. And in order to that here, it gives me all the fields that are loaded into the pivot table that I can now work with. And of course the gross margin is the net revenue. So I click here on insert field and then you can see that it's added to the formula. Now press a minus and now here press COX. So cost of goods sold as an additional one. And now I add this and now you can see that I have here the gross margin in percent available. And now let's do once more, right? Let's even add an additional field. Let's now say we want to have the gross margin in percentage. And of course this would be then the gross margin in absolute that we just added divided by the net revenue insert to now give us this additional field. Now we press okay. And now you can see that it already added that here to the table. Of course, here the percentage, we will likely want to form it as a percentage indeed to make it look like something like this. 
I think this is already first interesting analysis to now see how different margins of these stores compare to each other. And the great thing is that as soon as you have added those variables as calculated fields, you can do all the things we did with the pivot table already, right? So you can add them to the tables. You can then also drill down with it with all the other additional variables. So maybe, you know, let's just look at the percentage figures. Then we probably also don't need the Cox anymore. Let's say we want to break this down by the different sales reps. So here by the different sales reps of the store, so we can see what their revenue is. We can see um, what their margin is the non average they created. Maybe we don't need the stores, we just have the sales reps here. And of course you can also do things like sorting this whole thing by the margin. So here let's sort by the margin from largest to smallest. And of course here now we have some funny data in here. So sales reps probably didn't do a lot of revenue. Maybe just were some assistants working there for a couple of days. But here we can see that there are some reps which also more significant results. So this person was doing more than 30,000 euro in revenue and had a margin of 64%. So there are reps like that that are doing quite well. And then of course we can now go down to the bottom of the table where we have margins or we have reps who are doing 60,000 euro and have a really low margin, right? And this of course would be interesting, conduct some basic analyses like this, have an understanding of the data and then to work with this in this way. There's another thing that is very powerful that you can do with pivot tables and this is to use them to create dashboards in Excel, to create dynamic dashboards in Excel. So to make that work, let's look at an example. Let's maybe work with the store names. So let's imagine we want to make a dashboard that helps me to slice into revenue and margin data for the store. So let's add here the revenue and the margins. And the first thing in order to move there that's already pretty cool is if you here click on pivot table analyze. There is the option here to insert slicers. Right, so you can insert slicers, now it asks you what type of slicers you want to have. So let's say we want to have slicers for the months and maybe also for the store names. So let's add both of them. And you can see that now it added these additional panels that you can here freely position in your table. And what this is doing now just on the table, that you can now select for instance this data just for January or just for February or just for March. So in the end of the day, it's nothing else but filters. You can also tick several of them, but it's a bit of a more visual way. And this can be then very easily used as an input mechanism for the dashboards that you want to create. Because the next thing that you can do is also to insert charts. So if you click here on the pivot table, pivot table analyze, it provides you the opportunity to insert a pivot chart as it's called. And maybe let's just here go for the standard cluster columns. So here by store it gives me the net revenue and the gross margin. Of course you can go with any other chart as well. And it's a special type of chart that automatically adjusts the content to all the things we have shown here in the pivot table. Because now what you can do is that if you here now change this, it automatically changes all the contents of your stores as well. And of course you can highlight both, right? You can say, let me just show the data for Berlin for May or for April or for March, or maybe I want to have different stores. So Berlin, Düsseldorf and London. And this is really the, the core of how you would build dashboards. So if you would want to make a great dashboard out of that, you could now create all types of pivot tables like that. Often then you do a distinct tab where you hide all your pivot tables and then you have an output tab. They have all kinds of charts like this. And then of course you can format the charts, make them look a little bit better. You can also format the slicers to make them look really cool, really great. So that's, I don't want to go into detail here too much because of course you can just really go like spend lots of time talking about this. But then you have some controls for the users who can just drill down here in the data, select the dates, select the stores. And this is really a powerful way on how you can enable your users to in a very intuitive way with the help of pivot tables, drill down into your your data sets. So there are different ways of building dashboards with Excel. Pivot tables for sure is one very effective of them. You can have a full playlist with Excel videos including one video on how to build dashboards without pivot tables. Actually in the video that I created there let me know in the comments if you would be interested in another video on how to build dashboards with pivot tables and of course check out the other videos in the playlist to learn more about Excel. So if you have any questions on this or other tips you want to share on Excel or pivot tables yourself, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. 
Also, big, big thanks to all the members of the channel. Thank you for supporting the cause here. This is very much appreciated. If you took any value out of this video at all, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to stay up to date on all my content and also turn on the notification bell. My name is Heinrich. I release weekly videos every single Saturday. See you again next week. Until then, all the best to you and bye-bye.